These are the 5.3 notes for Algebra 2. We're going to talk today about negative exponents. The directions first in this first set are asking us to simplify each expression. Write your answer using only positive exponents. So what we're going to do is we're going to move any negative exponent from its current location to the bottom or top of the fraction. So if something's on the bottom, we're going to move it to the top. If something is at the top, we're going to move it to the bottom. Let's start with example one. I notice x to the negative five, so I'm going to need to move that to the bottom of a fraction bar. When I do so, it becomes a positive exponent. And since I have nothing at the top, I'll go ahead and just put a one there as a placeholder. All right, for example number two, my first step is to, be to take this x to the negative seven and move it. So the x to the third is a positive, it can stay where it is x squared at the bottom is a positive, it can stay. And then I'm going to move the x to the negative 7 to the bottom and make the 7 positive. So as you move it, you make it positive. Then I'm going to combine these two together to make x to the third over x to the ninth. And then at the very end, I will ask myself, where are there more x's in the numerator or denominator? Denominator. And how many more? There are six more. Just like I did on example number one, I will use a one as a placeholder to get myself a final answer of one over x to the sixth. Example number three. Again, my first step is going to be move any negative exponents so this x to the third will move to the bottom. The y squared will stay at the top. x to the ninth will stay where it is because it's a positive. And y to the negative seven will move to the top and become positive. And now we can just combine our like terms. It looks like all the y's are in the numerator and all the x's are in the denominator. That makes it pretty easy. I'm just going to add my exponents to get a final answer of y to the ninth over x to the twelfth. Example number four. I notice that I have this x here at the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and put a one right there so I don't think it's attached to that other x. Right, and then we're going to move some things around. I'm going to leave my x to the first up at the top. x to the fourth can stay. y to the negative one moves down, becomes positive. And the x to the negative eight that was in the denominator is going to move up to the top and become positive. Okay, now we get to combine our like terms. I have a bunch of x's at the top. I'm going to add all those exponents together. 1 plus 4 plus 8 to get 13. And then I just have this one y at the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as a y. I don't even need that exponent of a 1. All right. So that's how those work with x's and obviously any other variables as well. We did work with x's and y's, but you could do the same thing with a's, b's, c's, etc. The next thing we're going to work on is negative and fraction exponents when we're talking about actual numbers. So it says to evaluate, which just means we want an answer as an, a number as an answer. If I see a negative, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it. I want to change this into a root negative 27. And if you remember, the numerator becomes the exponent, meaning the little 2 is going to go up here at the top as an exponent. And the denominator becomes the root. So the little 3 can go in front. And I like to keep a parenthesis there, but it's about the same whether you keep that parenthesis there or not. Now I need to do the third root of negative 27. So I'm asking myself what number times itself times itself gets me negative 27. 
that would be negative 3. And then we square it. And negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So now that I've completed that problem, I realize it is important that we have these um, parentheses here because it's going to affect um, this next step right there. So it is important to have those parentheses right there. Example number six. Negative 125 to the one-third power. Put negative 125 on the inside. Exponent, numerator. Denominator becomes the root. And then again, in your head, you're thinking what number times itself, times itself three times, gets me negative 125. That's going to be negative 5. Keep that parenthesis. We just bring over the 1 that we haven't used yet. And negative 5 to the first power is just negative 5. Example 7. Example 7 would be a good one for you to pause the video and try it. Make sure you got it correct. So for example 7, you should have done negative 32. Root on the bottom. Exponent up at the top. Fifth root of negative 32 should be negative 2. And we will square that to get a positive 4. Hopefully you did well on that one when you tried it on your own. Next thing we're going to move on to is exponents that are negative. So for example number eight, notice that exponent is actually a negative. So what we need to do, just like we did on example number one with our x's, we need to take this and write the exponent in at the bottom and make it positive. Since there's nothing at the top, we'll put a 1. Now, we are going to focus all of our attention on the denominator here. And this 1 is just going to float from one part to the next to the next. He's not going to do anything else throughout this problem. Just sit there looking pretty. Fourth root. One exponent there. Right. So the fourth root of 16 is asking what times what? times what, times what, gets you 16. What number four times gets you 16? And that should be a two. Good. Notice I just brought that one over one more time. And then I'll bring it over again, and then two to the first power is two. So you get a final answer of one half. All right, for example, number nine, Notice the negative exponent. So we'll start by moving that negative exponent to the bottom and making it now a positive. We'll put a placeholder of a 1 at the top. And we'll focus all of our attention in the denominator and rewrite it. 25. Do you know which one goes where? Three should be at the top. Two should be down at the bottom. Now remember, that two could be invisible. It's called a square root. So if you don't write the two, it's still considered a square root. I know the square root of 25 is five. Bring over the one again. Now I do five to the third power. So I multiply five times five times five. My final answer, 1 over 125. All right, our last problem for today, example number 10. Again, this would be a great time to pause the video, give this one a try. Then you can fast forward and see if you got it correct. Right. Hopefully you were able to set it up like this with the 4 up at the exponent and the 5 down as the root. The fifth root of 32. 
So if you're stuck on how to get that, what I would recommend is grabbing your calculator and just start trying some different things. Start with a really small number. Maybe you start with twos. So you go to your calculator and you do two times two times two times two times two. You want to do that five times. And then if you get an answer of 32, that means two is your answer. Two is your fifth root. If not, then you would go to the next number, three times three times three times three times three. And you would just keep working your way up until you got 32. We got it the first time around, which means our fifth root of 32 is two. Bring over that one. And you do two to the fourth power. So let me show you how to do two to the fourth power using your exponent button. You're gonna type in two here. And then your exponent button is going to be right here, directly underneath your clear, this one right here. And then you can type in the fourth. It also allows you to type in the parentheses. So I'm gonna do that. Parenthesis two, close it, exponent of four. And I get an answer of 16. You'll get the same thing by doing two times two times two times two, four times. All right. All right, so one over 16. Final answer. Really good work today. Let me know if you have any questions.